What's up, Goobers? Welcome back to part two of the Logan Paul situation. We're covering Logan Paul's response video today, so let's get into it. See, Past Room is kind of a dumbass, and they forgot to tell you the update to the situation. Or not really an update, but a summarization of the first Logan Paul scam episode, which you should go watch on your own if you haven't watched this one already, but it is long and so is this one, so I'm gonna skip right to the chase. Basically, Logan Paul had this cryptocurrency called CryptoZoo. Eventually, he bought, like, some of his own. Like, he bought his own brand to have a token before it was released to the public. He did this with Jake. He did this with Jake the Crypto King and uh, Eddie Ibanez. And Logan Paul's manager. Although, Logan and his manager didn't sell any of the coin... Anybody else did. Eddie Ibanez sold his coin for about uh, $1.5 million. And... Ah, fuck. What was his name? Uh, Jake, the Crypto King, sold his for around $7 million. So, that's the update. Jake Paul has also been kind of caught up in the lie of hiring criminals to do his work, which we will get into right now. Yeah, so... Okay, chat, we're going to... Okay, so in this video, we will be looking at the Logan Paul response deleted video. We'll be looking at the Logan Paul addresses it on his uh, podcast called Impulse... Impulsive? We'll be looking at Cater of the Doors feet pick. Okay, no. <laughs> we'll also be looking at the final update by Ludwig, a.k.a. Mogul Mail. Go follow that channel, it's really resourceful. And then Logan Paul's second apology, which is fucking great. I'm, I'm not gonna even lie. And then we'll look yeah, at dude. Logan Paul apologized to me by Coffee Gilla. Uh, he just said, he just said, guys, you should follow Shrimp's goal. Let's just start with Logan Paul's fucking apology, because I've seen clips of this around, and it's fucking amazing. Let's just hop into it. Okay. I watched a three-part series called Investigating Logan Paul's Biggest Scam, and like many on this platform, you have successfully used my name for views and money. While your work used to be impartial, your addiction to clicks has clouded your judgment and you've made very real errors with very real repercussions. Coffee, you took a shot oh. at my reputation. Uh, so in this video today, I'm going to be defending myself with facts. Logan, like you didn't post you a video of you killing a dead rat. Yeah, no, uh, okay, real quick, motherfuckers, like, coffee, I love what you do when you expose people, but when you expose me, I kind of fucking hate you, it's like, <laughs> yeah, no shit you're not gonna like about after he exposed you, like, what? If, uh, this video chat gets, uh, ten likes, I'll try Prime. Zilla tried to work with law enforcement in the past, but his work was described as not anchored to truth and often speculative. He is a... Where? Where are you getting this from, Logan? Are you just... Also, like, he keeps on showing meme pictures of CoffeeZilla. This isn't making me want to agree with you, Logan. What? A oh, look, I have a question, Kador. Oh. Agenda, and he's nothing more than the keem star of crypto and finance. Coffee, you interviewed the developer who stole the game code, fled to Switzerland, and held okay. hostage for a million dollars. Well, his name is Zach Kelling. Surely, as the internet detective that you proclaim to be, you would know that he spent time in prison for multiple felonies, one for aggravated robbery, armed robbery at a liquor Why store. Why would he hire somebody that's I was crimes. about to say, I was about to say, Logan, you're talking about how it's bad that CoffeeZilla interviewed this guy. Where's your VC? <laughs> Moronic Doorcraft? <laughs> like, you're talking about how, oh, this guy is so bad, you shouldn't have interviewed him. Bro, you hired this guy. What the fuck? <laughs> I hired a armed felon. And you interviewed him. You're a bad person. Guys, guys, I don't support Adolf, but I'm best friend, Kanye West. <laughs> Exactly! That's the type of dumbass- I look so white right now. That's the type of dumbass logic you're using. Uh, come on. Like, listen. Listen, I gotta say. Just be smarter, Logan. Jesus. I mean, that he lied about having 30 engineers and a $50,000 a week burn rate. On my end, I have 30 engineers. I'm burning $50,000 a week. Which, side note, is how this delusionist landed on the million dollar code ransom, but it turns out he only had three engineers. Wouldn't someone- Okay, so Logan, you're telling me you hired this guy, and you just didn't think to, like, do any more, like, Ah, oh, you're fine. 
you probably have so many. You probably have so many. Uh, you probably have so many people that are uh, doing this. And then also, you see this image, and and you don't immediately go to him and you say, "You have five workers. What are you doing?" Like Logan, you're just making a case for us to make against you, homie. What goofy all logic are you using, bro? Like Logan, you're acting really fucking stupid, which is on brand for you. But come on. And I know what you're thinking. What type of idiot would work with an unsavory individual like Zach Kelly? I guess that's what I get for trusting the team that I relied on to vet and manage Eddie's hiring process. Honestly, his first apology wasn't even as, like, this is worse. Because this isn't even an apology. It's a response, which is ten times worse. He's just going, listen, I know I technically hired the felon and kept on paying him and I should have done my own research, but, um... It was my legal guy's fault. They did it. <laughs> like, you're throwing everyone under the bus except yourself, Logan. Like, sometimes, you just gotta admit, Hey, guys, I'm sorry, Hatch Day didn't go exactly how I planned. I didn't do that much looking into seeing if these guys were trustworthy, and I'm sorry. And then maybe refund... Yeah, and you're like a multi-millionaire. Maybe you could refund some of the people that spent... Half a million dollars and more on your shitty fucking Pokemon ripoff? Lastly, CoffeeZilla, I now know your motives with this. Clout and money, good for you, but also your your slimiest. So I'm not gonna come on any of your podcasts. If you wanna come on Impulsive and talk about this, that's fine. I'm not gonna come on any of your podcasts where uh, you'll make money off it, but uh, if you wanna come on to my podcast and I can make money off it, that would be ma great, man. Um, yeah. Also, real quick. Everybody on Logan's team looks like they like they're sucking his dick. Um, Logan, Logan, real quick, can I say something? Like, uh, if like if like let's say I'm not I'm not even asking this. Please don't fire me, please. Like, you can't talk uh, to employees or friends of yours because you're paying them, Logan. Like, do you think they're gonna give a different opinion? Because whenever they do, they like suck your dick before they do. If you put my name in the title and label it Logan Paul scam, you're going to get more views. The problem. I don't know what you're talking about, Logan. It's not like your video is the most viewed video on my channel. I don't, I don't know what you mean if I put Logan Paul scam allegations in the okay, in their mind. This leading email is highlighted in my statement. He invited me on his show to come talk about CryptoZoo. Um, I chose not to do that because it is now clear to me that he's milking this. Again, why would he not? This is, this is big for him. He caught a lot of traction. He gained like half a million subscribers. And I'm sure he got a decent amount of money pumping his Patreon. Guess what? He gets views every video because he covers drama, Logan. Also, notice, Logan, how you're saying he's really good at what he does and tell it's about you. And then you say he's a total liar and nothing he says is true. Logan, dude, you know that you sound like you're a parody right now. Or, like, you know that, correct? This is Coffee Zilla. I'm forwarding the same message I sent your email here as well. Also, oh my god, Logan's a fucking child. Okay. You guys can't see it, so I will, um, I will turn off my face cam and the, oops, I didn't mean to turn off chat box. I'm gonna for turn off my face cam, oops, where is it, wait, webcam, no, that's not what I wanted to turn off, I wanted to turn off, no, where is it, wait, hmm? Oh, here, I'm gonna turn off my cam real quick. You see that? Steven Capzilla? He is literally a fourth grade boy. He is a fourth grade little kid. Dude, you know how... I'm gonna record my first, uh, first episode for, for my Let's Play tomorrow? Nice. Like, he's a fucking child. <laughs> I, I got him, guys. Look, I, 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 I get it. I put Cap in the name. <laughs> like, dude, you're being a fucking baby. I asked you for a comment multiple times over the course of a year. You refused. I invited you on my platform. You refused. You invited me on Impulsive. I refused. We're unfortunately at an impasse, so let me try to get us unstuck here because I think people deserve to hear from both of us. I'd like to offer you a co-live stream interview on CryptoZoo to respond on tomorrow at 10 a.m. PST so no one has to travel on the holidays. There'll be no editing, just us talking one-on-one. -on -one. This is the most fair and neutral way to do this. I will send you a video link if you agree. Here was my response. I sent him an email. Um... After I posted my, uh, my statement. Hey, Steven. Just wanted to put my response to your scam allegations on your radar. Link below. 
Even though you broke laws, hardly substantiated your evidence, fabricated dangerously misleading falsehoods, and wrongfully accused me of scamming my fans, I'd still love to host you on Impulsive. Again, unmonetized. It can even be one-on-one. -on -one. Sorry, boys. <laughs> I'm interested in talking about your workflow, creative process, and of course, crypto. Okay! Oh, wait, wait. Real quick, Logan. You realize... Okay. Logan. He invited you on a co-live stream. Do you know what that fucking means, Logan? It means you live stream and he live streams. You guys can talk to each other and you both make money. It's that easy, Logan. You'd be both making money off a situation. Like... Logan. Are you that stu- I don't think you're that stupid. I mean, you did film a dead body, so yeah, I guess you are. Like, dude. He ho he said he'll host a co-live stream with you. Do you not know what that means? Like, you're like, you're like, ha <laughs> I could totally monetize the video. But instead, like, I, like, instead, I, like, you could totally monetize the video and just not tell him. I think it was shined in a bad light. I think if it didn't have the uh, the negative outline on it, people wouldn't. No, 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 no. no, no. It's, it's, yeah. it, that was the first critique sure, that happened. Sure. I actually have a. Uh, I want to ask you something. again. I'm just throwing out other people's point of views. I'm not trying to stick a. a... This is exactly what I was pointing out. They're sucking his dick. Listen, I, I'm I'm just pointing out other people's uh, POVs. Uh, Logan, please don't fire me. Eventually, like halfway through, just fucking Logan's fucking manager joins. Like somewhere, like right here. Hold up. Hold, I couldn't say anything. And then Coffeezilla series came out, and I fucking called you guys. And I said, I'm making a statement. I don't give a fuck. Yep. I I I spent days writing this thing because at the end of the day, he told a story. Yep, Mike's fucking manager joins. We don't really care. This guy's just like looks like he's on his phone, which is hilarious. This video. Coffeezilla is not a criminal. I called him. I apologized. Uh, my initial response That's good. to his series was that of of a fire, uh, an ego flare whatever it is pride i'm a fighter at heart and uh, i was defensive because i know i never scammed anyone with this project i never made any money never sold any tokens and i only had the best intentions going in um but the fact is the suing coffeezilla is not going to help crypto zoo holders so i do need to focus my attention where it should be which yes. is on fans thank and you that mean the world to me so i'd like to announce my three-step plan moving forward Step one, Jeff and I are going to burn our zoo tokens so we have no financial upside in the game and it will add value to holder tokens. Step two, uh, okay. we want to offer a rewards program for players who are disappointed in the status of the game. So essentially you're gonna be able to burn your, your base egg uh, or your base animal for the mint price, which was 0.1 ETH or the equivalent in BNB. I am personally committing a thousand ETH. These are fucking words. I don't know what's happening. Million dollars. Um, Right maybe now, honestly maybe the matrix is real because i don't know what the fuck he's saying right now who want to get out and then step three obviously finish and deliver the game as outlined in the white paper by completing the uh egg bridge from eth to bsc for base animals and base eggs completing the marketplace and and obviously completing the releasing your animals into the wild to accrue your yield function to say I am disappointed in how this was handled internally is an understatement. Um, there's a full internal investigation going on along with an audit, and we are going to pursue full legal action for whomever needs to be held accountable. If any money is recovered in the process, it'll go right to the community. My sole obligation is to my supporters, and um, I know this video is long overdue. I don't know why, but his eyes kind of look like Matty B's does. Like, if you just single out his eyes, they kind of look like Matty B's. Like in the hair, the little hair. Like if you single out the mustache and the nose, it kind of looks like Maddie B's talking to you, and it's so weird. Here it is. I'm sorry, guys. I I, I apologize. Um, that takes way longer than it should. Hey guys, I know I haven't said sorry this whole time, but I'm sorry. For, for how this has unfolded thus far, and I want people to know that they can trust me and that I'll always take care of the fans and people who support me. Uh, I appreciate your guys' patience while we do our internal investigation, and I promise to be transparent and disclose any information we find out in the process. And lastly, thank you, CoffeeZilla. Um, you have catalyzed this, and I am very grateful for your work and your investigation. And I mean that. Notice how fastly he switched up. He went from going, I'm going to sue you, CoffeeZilla, unless you come on my podcast, you stupid little prick, to going, CoffeeZilla, you're a real hero, and I'm, I'm glad you exposed me. That, I feel like that is just a way for him to get his supporters back, because obviously he's eventually going to have supporters again. Obviously. Now, why am I saying this? Why does it matter? 
Well, it mainly matters that, um, like, he's never going to change. I'm going to be honest. YouTubers I are kind of like movie stars. They, Whenever they get famous, they are stunted. He did a good... He tried to change. But I still see Logan Paul as that boy that filmed that dead body, honestly. Notice how he didn't put it on his main channel. This is true. This is totally true. He would have never done anything if CoffeeZilla didn't expose him. He wouldn't give a shit. He wouldn't have said anything about it. The over. Logan Paul apologized. CoffeeZilla, your slang is He is a lopsided journalist with an agenda, more like an internet criminal. Oops, wrong video. That was the first response. He actually apologized in another response. It's like a little gnat. It's like a little annoying gnat. It bothers me. The defamation lawsuit. That is f***ing happening. This is wrong. This is wrong. Hold on, wait a second. That's not it either. Uh, turns out it's actually on his secondary channel. That's, that's why I couldn't find it. It's entitled, Thank You, CoffeeZilla. It's the third response from Logan Paul, and it's a pretty big change in Logan's attitude so far. So let's see what he has to say to us. CoffeeZilla is not a criminal. Oh, that's a relief. I thought Logan was gonna hire me. Not only that, Logan also pledges a $1.3 million refund plan for people who bought his NFTs. I am personally committing 1,000 ETH to this, which is about $1.3 million. In addition to that, he also promises okay. to finish CryptoZoo, which was left abandoned. And then step three, obviously finish and deliver the game as outlined okay. in the white paper. Now, I'll be honest, this is a big change in tone. And honestly, a lot of this is good news. It's great that victims are going to get something back. Logan seems to acknowledge his continuous lapse in judgment. He's not suing me, which is... <laughs> really cool. And nice. frankly, this new response is just uh, way better than his last two. I think we can all acknowledge that. Yeah. While also acknowledging that it's not really a perfect response either. And I think that's the point of this video, is to speak to his core audience, to tell them he didn't scam anyone. And for what it's worth, I think Logan succeeds here. The problem is, I don't think... I or the crypto zoo holders were who Logan was really addressing here. And this is where the response falls more flat because he doesn't adequately address the real victims of crypto zoo, which I, I think they're rightfully angry about. And I wanted to spend some time talking about that because again, they've been the heartbeat of this whole story and they feel very differently about this response than Logan's core audience does. They don't feel like it's enough. And I want to talk about why. $1.3 million is a lot of money. Unfortunately, the scam was much bigger than $1.3 million. So the fact yeah. is most victims are not going to be made whole by this plan. Just in ZooCoins alone, blockchain evidence shows $7.7 .7 million was stolen by Logan's team, depending on who you believe. And this refund does nothing for those victims. It doesn't even apply to the holder of ZooCoins at all. You get nothing if you bought this in-game currency. This refund only applies to current egg holders. So they can cash out that NFT for the initial mint price in crypto, which matters sort of because crypto has crashed a lot. So even though people spent $2.5 million on these eggs, in order to refund all these holders at mint price, it now only costs $1.3 million in today's money, which again is nice, but doesn't do enough because the zoo coins were most of this scam. I mean, that's where most of the money was spent. It wasn't just on the NFTs. It was on this in-game currency, which Logan seems to have no intention of refunding. And his response for why is pretty bad. He responds to somebody who lost $80,000 who told him, I hope this isn't Oof. just doing what you have to do technically to not get sued. I believe there has been a misconception here. As outlined in the white paper, Zoo was created to support CryptoZoo and was not intended to be an investment vehicle. When you sold or bought is not my decision. And look, to be fair to him, there was a misconception that Zoo was an investment vehicle, but it's a misconception that Sorry, he I created. Phone, yeah. I mean, he's you the too, one who bye. said CryptoZoo was a yeah, fun bye. game that earned you money. And how it earned you that money was that your NFTs earned you Zoo tokens you know, things that were supposed to have value. That was the whole point of the game. So to suggest that these coins weren't advertised as valuable or an investment vehicle is insane, especially since Logan's own team had rules for selling based strictly on the value of said investment vehicle. Quote, rules for selling. 
no selling until a $200 million market cap. So I think it's fair to say if Logan's own team were buying zoo coins early, waiting for them to go up in value to a certain level and then selling them, that sounds like an investment vehicle, albeit a very stupid one. So yeah. this explanation definitely doesn't hold water. And Logan obviously just doesn't want to be on the hook for zoo coins. Instead, he just kind of wants to refund the much smaller part of the NFTs. What makes this even worse? Yeah, no. Oh, yeah. If you have an egg, if you still have an egg, that uh, then yeah, you get money. But if you bought uh, the rest of the shit, uh, you, fuck this you, I guess. This doesn't even apply to everyone who bought these NFTs because some of these people sold their NFTs at a deep loss thinking that CryptoZoo was over, that it was abandoned. And there's actually a way you could have tracked this whole thing or Logan could have and, you know, found a way to repay all the people who lost money on egg. But instead, this refund only applies to current holders, meaning nobody who sold during the year and a half this project was abandoned gets anything back, which is a large percentage of the actual victims. And this is pretty bad. This was brought to Logan's attention by one of the people in the Discord. Joao says, quote, Logan Paul, what will happen to the people who sold everything at a loss when the project appeared to be, quote, abandoned? Will everyone who minted be able to get that refund or just the current owners? Now, in reply to this, true. someone in the Discord said, if you sell, you lose common investing knowledge. And Logan replies, seeming to agree with this idea which is just kind of a terrible perspective for Logan yeah, to have oof. when he seems to be saying that he wants to refund these people. And he's the reason a lot of these people left. And this is where Logan's new apology starts to ring more hollow. It's in all of the follow-ups after the response video, because I, I don't know if he can help himself from betraying how he really feels about this, because in another Discord exchange, Logan says, please do not put any more money into CryptoZoo, which by the way, is quite reasonable to say, but then somebody follows up and says, guys, can someone explain what he said with not investing? But rather than replying, oh guys, I just meant like, I don't want anyone else losing money or, you know, I don't want anyone else recklessly gambling. Logan replies instead, quote, I will no longer be the scapegoat for anyone's financial decisions, which is a wild response for someone who's claiming to refund people because it implies that he thinks he's the victim Oof. here. And this is just insane to say as the face of this project, which got everyone involved, because I think it betrays how he feels about this situation. He doesn't seem to see anything wrong with advertising a game that will make you money, it never delivering millions of dollars being stolen by criminals he hired. And then when all of those people want their money back, he feels like he's the scapegoat, like, oh, these guys shouldn't have believed me when I advertised to them a fun game that will make you money. It just doesn't- Yeah, what fucking idiots to think I'm advertising something that costs money to make a fun game. Um, oh, guys, guys, God, 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 they thought that they were gonna get a fun game. Make any sense. I mean, Logan had a simple job to do. All he had to do was just come out, apologize, get as much money back for the victims as possible. But he himself can't help but play the victim here. In fact, I have a third example of how Logan might really feel because Logan tweeted right before this response. He says, quote, the matrix is real. Pray you never become its target. Now, I guess he's trying to channel Andrew Tate here unsuccessfully, basically saying like, ah, oh, I'm getting attacked. Not because I did anything wrong or scammed anyone. I'm it's just, because I'm the matrix. I'm just an enemy of the system. That's why I must be getting attacked. But if that's the case, we then have to wonder, did the Matrix force you to apologize? Did it force you to hand back 1.3 million? I just think comments like this go so far to undercut his apology because it's very clear that instead of actually like caring about the victims, he feels like he's a victim. I mean, he's saying like, oh, pray you never become its target. Who's the Matrix though, Logan? Like, is it your fans who got robbed? Who are the agents coming after you? I, I know it's not me. I know you're not saying I'm the Matrix here in my $10 million studio. Because after all, you're thanking me. You're thanking the Matrix. Like, what is this response? It's so childish the way he speaks about this stuff. And again, this isn't to be dismissive of Logan's actions if he follows through, because there is a lot of good that 1.3 million can do. And you know what? If he goes back and he finishes the game, that's also good. But it's just so frustrating when the good that Logan seems to be doing, he's doing the bare minimum of at the last possible second with motivations that seem to be in the proper context, to say it lightly, 
irreparably tainted by self-interest. Now, I'm not going to address Logan's other two response videos, which are mostly like attacking me because Logan sort of walked those back now. He's apologized. He said he was going to delete them. I think he deleted one of them. The other one's still up. I don't know if the impulsive episode's going to go down. Either way, Probably it's not. much less interesting now that he says he doesn't like mean it anymore. He's not going to sue. So I don't feel the need to publicly defend myself. If you're curious about all the wild stuff that was wrong in those first two responses, um, I'll put the video live on my Patreon. But I didn't want to release it at the time because I thought there was a better chance at getting a good ending for the victims here if I was a bit more diplomatic with Logan at this critical juncture when he was deciding whether he was going to give money back or not. I don't know if I succeeded in moving the needle, but that was certainly my intention. Either way, now that Logan has responded with his plan, and I've given Honestly, it's one of the best on YouTube much, responses, but not perfect. In, you know, self-interest versus a genuine, you know, attempt to help out the victims. I think this is about as much as I'm going to be able to contribute to this situation. I mean, I do think it's incredible that even $1.3 million came of this, while I also can acknowledge that it's not nearly enough for the real victims of this. Thank you, Goobers, for watching this video. It's amazing that you're watching a video of mine. Thank you so much. And if you haven't done already, please subscribe. You Goobers are fucking amazing, and let's get this video to more views than the last one. Fuck it. Um, but anyways, it's me, Shrimp Skull, logging off. Um, so, good. Bye. Bye!